Hey you, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about how you can get started on creating your first guitar cover video. So I'm going to show you guys what gear you need and what softwares to use and show you guys a little bit about how to set that up and of course how to record your video and how to edit it in a way so your covered audio would line up perfectly with your video. You can of course bypass all of that by recording yourself with your phone and playing your cover live but pre-recording multiple guitar parts and shooting it from different camera angle will just make your cover look way cooler. So if you want to make your first guitar cover the best it can be, keep watching. The best thing about this is all of the software I will be showing you guys today, the DAW, uh, the editing software, uh, are all free. So anyone with a computer, internet, phone can just get started on creating. Alright. Let's jump into it. You'll need an audio interface to send the signals of your guitar into your computer into whatever software you'll be using to record your guitar. There are plenty of affordable audio interfaces out there and the most popular one is the Scarlett Solo 30 Generation, I believe is what it's called. And, uh, and for around 120 to 140 US dollars, you can get yourself just the interface itself but for a little bit more expensive one, they also have a bundle that will give you a headphone and a microphone and I think even a travel pack or a travel bag for you to put the uh, microphone and the headphones in. Uh, but of course, that one is a little bit more expensive, but it's very well worth it if you're on the market for a headphone and microphone to go along with your interface. So once you get your audio interface, what you'll need to do is plug it into your computer and download the drivers for uh, the interface to get the interface up and running on your PC. So Google is your friend on this one. What you'll need to do is Google the name of whatever audio interface you end up getting. So let's say you get the Solo uh, third generation from uh, Scarlett Focusrite. What you'll need to do is type in Scarlett Focusrite uh, Solo third generation drivers. And first link, usually that would come up, is a link to Focusrite's uh, website. And it'll take you to the download page and you'll have to click on what devices you're using and what kind of download you need for it. So you look for you know, the Focusrite Solo, third generation, and you click on drivers and then you'll see a download box right there on the screen for you to click on and run it. And then you'll have the drivers installed on your computer. All right, on your audio interface, you should see a gain knob and a little bit of a light indicator showing how hot your guitar signal is. So what you should do is slowly increase the gain knob just a bit. And just strum your guitar or instrument as loud as you can. All right. Right now, that is a pretty good level. So let me give you guys an example of what you don't want. So right there, it's redlining a bit, so you don't want to back that off just a bit. Depends on how hot your pickups are, you probably won't need to adjust the gain knob at all. You probably just need to leave it all the way off. In step number two, you're going to need to download a DAW. And what a DAW is, it stands for Digital Audio Workstation. So this is the software that you'll be using to record your guitars or vocals or whatever it is that you need to do to create music or create covers. So the one that I'm going to be using is called Reaper. Now this software is free to use, free to download for anyone, uh, but if you don't purchase a license, you will have to deal with a five second pop-up box that'll ask you to purchase the license. Uh, but after five seconds, you just click on still evaluating and you can exit that box right out. All right, so you have your interface, you downloaded the drivers for it, you downloaded the DAW and it's up and running. Let's see if we can get that guitar going through your computer. So if your Reaper looks a little different from mine, you want it to look the same, uh, what you can do is go up to option, go down to theme, and click on the one that says default 5.0. And that is the one that I'm using. Okay? So, let's go back up, up to option, preferences, 
and then what you need to do is go to audio and then click on device and in the first one in your audio system you might be on direct sound uh, by default so what you need to do is click on audio system go down to AGO click on AGO and then underneath it you'll see AGO driver what you'll need to do is click on your interfaces drivers or interface AGO driver or if your interface doesn't have a AGO driver built in what you'll need to download is a AGO for all uh, driver and what AGO is it will make your uh, interface and your PC perform a lot better while recording so make sure you have either your interface AGO driver set up or the AGO for all v2 and there will be a link down in the description box below of a video that will show you how to set up AGO for all pretty easily so get all that figured out make sure everything is working fine make sure that the sound is coming out of your interface Alright, so make sure that your headphone is plugged into the audio interface itself. Otherwise, you're not going to hear anything coming out of your door. Alright, now let's get your guitar up and running through Reaper. Alright, so double click the left side right here. Alright, so depending on what input you plug your guitar or instrument into, you may need to change uh, the N1 right here. Now when you first open it, you probably won't see this button. So what you'll need to do is expand it just a bit and you will see the N1 right there. Alright, so if you're plugged into the first input you're pretty much good to go but if you're plugged into the second input or the third input you'll have to select that in this menu right here. So since I am plugged into input number two I will have to select N2 and then when I hit this red button right here to arm it I can now get the guitar signal in through the door. Alright, so if you're not hearing your guitar for whatever reason, what you should do is go up to here to this little speaker right here and just click it once and you'll have record monitoring on. And what that will do is that will bring the signal of what the track is hearing out into your headphones. I, I can hear it, but the thing is the capture card is not picking up the sound because it is running all the sound through the AGO driver into my audio interface. So uh, the capture card won't be able to pick up the sound of my guitar. Alright, so now let's get into the fun part and that is amp plugins. Uh, there are plenty of affordable or even free amp plugins out there. You can get uh, contact and get the Guitar Rig 6, which is a free amp plugin that has all the effects you would need in it. But today, I will be using uh, the 14-day free trial of Neural DSPs for in Cali Suite. There's a little bit of prep work involved to try to get that plugin up and running, but trust me, after you get all that done and over with, it's totally worth it in the end and you don't have to do as many prep work for the next time you want to use another Neural DSP plugin. So what you need to do is create a Neural DSP account and an iLock account and then you'll also need to download an iLock license manager program and log into that and then after that you can start the download for whatever uh, guitar plugin from Neural DSP that you want and the installation and getting it up and running will be smooth sailing after that. So let me show you guys the installation process and how to get that plugin to show up in your Reaper. Alright, so let me go here. Uh, Fort and Cali Suite, I'm going to get the free trial of that. Alright, and then now it'll ask you for to install it for Mac or PC. I'm on PC, so I'll be clicking that. And even right here, it gives you like a step-by-step. -step. A process on how to get everything working. So that is pretty cool. Okay, so you got your little setup screen right here. Hit the complete. Make sure that you know where the VST and VST3 files are going to. That way you can pull them up in Reaper and have it running in your DAW. Alright, so 
All right, show you hit next. And then install. Give it a moment to do its own thing. You may get something like this that'll ask you uh, permission for the app to take control or make changes to your device. Just hit yes on that. Just to be safe, I recommend you to start the 14 day trial and the standalone plugin. Because sometimes when you try to open up a plugin, especially this Neural DSP plugin, there will be another like pop-up window that Reaper would like block. So you won't be able to activate the 14-day uh, the trial within Reaper. Uh, that doesn't happen all the time, but just to be safe, I recommend you to start up the standalone first. Uh, so when this box pops up, just click on try. Log in to your uh, iLock account. Select the computer that you are on. So if you only use one computer, great. Just click that one and then next. And then it will say successful activation. And you are on your way to using the plugin for 14 days for free. All right. So open up Reaper. There we go. Sometimes Reaper would have uh, the default settings of where it would scan for new plugin when you first load up. But if not and you don't see anything, what you do is go to Options, Preferences, and then you go down to Plugin, and then VST. And what you'll need to do is Edit Path List, Add Path, and then you will need to go to that folder that the uh, Neural DSP has installed your VST plugins in. So that is why I was saying make sure you remember where Neural DSP is installing those plugins. So once you select that, you hit Rescan, uh, Rescan VST path for new slash modified plugin. Click on that. And it'll take a moment for it to do its thing. And then once it's done, hit OK. And then go here. Arm, hit the red button for your guitar to go through. All right. And then hit the effects button. Alright, make so sure you have all plugins highlighted. So, type in what the name of your plugin is. So, I just downloaded Kali Suite. And there it is right there. Hit enter. And then, boom, you have your plugin up and running. Alright, so what your Reaper may do when you first set this up, it might record just the dry signal of your guitar. So, let me give you guys a little bit of an example. Uh, so I have my interface hooked up to my speakers, so you guys can hear the guitar is now, and it sounds sick. Okay, so, save. Now when you play it back, it sounds normal, right? But the thing is, this is the dry signal. And that dry signal is just running straight into the plugin. And so once you move that, you have your dry signal. So, undo, undo. So to fix all of that, what you need to do is right click this red button right here uh, go to record output record mono latency compensated that way when you hit the record button whatever all right and then uh, make sure you have your effect off otherwise uh, that whole signal thing is just going to run through that plugin again so either turn off the effect or move the track or take down to another track and 
then you'll have your uh, take with all of the effects applied. Alright, so you have your audio interface, you have your DAW, you have your plugin. Let's say you want to start creating a guitar cover. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit of kind of like a guide of how I go about doing my own guitar cover. When I find a song that I want to do a cover of, I try to find the BPM of that song. And the reason for that is, I can put that BPM into this timeline right here. So let's say uh, the song is at 150. It would make the whole grid move at the BPM of 150 and not only does it make everything fit it also makes it a little bit easier so I know where uh, each sections are at alright and if there's any like latency issues doing recording for whatever reason it'll make it easier for me to kind of move that take onto a specific part in the grid and it would snap to uh, where it should be in a song so it just makes things a little bit more easier, a little bit more organized uh, when I'm recording a cover. So the song I'm planning on covering is called Ohio is for Lover by Hawthorne Heights and that cover video might be out before this video drops. So if you want to hear the end product of everything I used in this video, going from like the whole recording process and the editing process. Uh, check out my cover of Ohio's for Lovers. So I already have the song recorded, so let me open up the project for that. And I'll give you guys my uh, little bit thought process and how I go about recording covers. Uh, right here, this is the track that I used to record with my plugin. And the plugin I used for this one is Archetype Nolly. I'm using the 14 day trial. And how I pretty much go about figuring out my tone is I try to dial in the tone as I'm learning and practicing the song. And the reason why I do that is it's more time efficient and so by the time I'm ready to record the tone for all the guitars are pretty much ready to go. So the first guitar I had to learn and figure out the guitar tone for is this intro. Right? I don't want to play too much of it and have this video get copyright. So here is my take on that guitar part. Alright, so... So I recorded that through this track right here in this plugin. And I was using uh, this preset I used for the clean guitar. So there's a clean amp. Uh, yeah, I don't have any compressor or overdrive or any delay going. So it's pretty much just a clean guitar. On the cab, I use a condenser and have that a little bit closer to the middle because I really enjoy the, uh, the warmth of a condenser mic. And I thought it sounded uh, great with the song. And also kept the Dynamic 57, but I have that a little bit more off to the side. That is everything I have going for the clean guitar. So. Right, and then second rhythm guitar. I have that one a little bit different because I wanted to add a little bit more depth to it so you can hear like a different guitar playing on one side and a totally different sounding guitar playing on the other side. Alright, so I think on the right guitar, I have a little bit more gain than the left one. Yep, so all the settings are pretty much just a little bit more on the right guitar. And everything else is all the same. There's no compression, no delay, no overdrive. Alright, and then, and then the third preset I use is the Ohio Crunch guitar. And that's usually for the choruses, uh, breakdown, bridge, or whatever. And the settings are pretty much the same as the clean, except I'm on the lead amp. And so... 
And so because there are two different guitars going that are playing in the same amplifier, what I like to do is have one playing in the humbucker position. So... And I have uh, another guitar, the second guitar, playing in, I believe it's the split between the humbucker and the middle. So the dynamics of it is a little bit different and you can hear uh, both of the guitars playing separately. So let me solo this. And how I go about mixing the guitars into the song itself, uh, I don't really do a whole lot of EQ work. So what I usually do is kind of just focus mostly on the level, or the sound level and the volume. Let me lower that down. So what I usually do as the song playing, I try to level the guitar for each section so it sounds even all the way through. Alright, yeah I don't want to play too much of the actual song so... So now let's jump to recording the video side of things. Okay, so I'm about to record my cover and before I begin, I just want to give you guys a little bit of a rundown of what I have going on. Uh, in my corner, I have my computer running Reaper with uh, my project of all the tapes and all the guitar parts that I have recorded. And when I hit the space bar on the keyboard over there, what that's going to do is count in uh, a measure or two. And the reason why it counts in a measure of two is one, it helped me prepare and get ready to record. And two, it would make editing a little bit easier. And I can align those counting measures getting up every take that I do on the timeline in the editing software. Uh, that's probably not going to make sense right now, but uh, it'll make sense in just a couple of minutes. Alright? What? What? So what I'm going to do now is, since I have three different guitar parts I covered in this song, uh, I'm going to have to do three different takes, and each of them for uh, each different guitar parts for this angle, and then at a different camera angle, I will have to repeat that process again, do the three takes, so on and so forth, for every different camera angle that I want to do. Alright, so let's get to it. All right, now we are on the editing stage. So I have all of my videos already exported into the editing software. And the software that I'm using is called DaVinci Resolve. And this is a free editing software that anyone can use. These clicks right here, I try to align them perfectly with every take that I do. All right, so. I'm going to go down here, and this is the third take of me playing over the, the third guitar in the song. And so I move this up here. Right. Turn off the magnet, and then get it to align as close as I can. There we go. So now the first camera angle that I did are all aligned perfectly. So whenever I want to switch to a uh, different guitar part during the song, all I'd have to do is just cut that, 
drag, and then when it gets to that part, it goes to the different take of the other guitar parts. So now everything from the first uh, camera angle are all aligned. Now let's do the second camera angle. Here is the count in measure. Delete. Find the end of the song. Alright, so around here. Alright. And then under the song right here at the end of the second take. Cool. Alright. Now I just repeat the process. Move this up into its own track. There we go. Alright, so it sounds like it is pretty spot on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to my project on Reaper and export the audio that I have for my cover. And I already have the levels all figured out. So just in case uh, I missed something, I always try to listen back to it again right before I render it just to make sure that uh, it all sounds good and ready to go. Alright, that is done. Drag it on here and then boom. Now as you can see the waves are pretty much matte and identical. Well, let me save that real quick. And what I like to do, I like to kind of, as the song plays, I like to disable the video. And kind of just go through each of the takes and make sure that everything is on time. Everything is looking good. Everything kind of matching up with the cover. Next thing I gotta do is uh, delete the audio from the camera. And so the only audio that should be playing is the cover that I recorded in Reaper. Whoop, uh oh. Okay. Alright, so now I have all the takes perfectly aligned with each other and perfectly aligned with the song. The, I think a cool way for this to start out is the guitar view. So, I'm thinking maybe fade in on this part. And a clean intro. And then maybe switch to a different angle after that. What I'd like to do is kind of move all the other videos way down the timeline so whenever I think uh, a certain angle would fit very well with the song I just pull those 
video back in and then edit it and then uh, move everything back out here when I'm finished with the uh, the take or the camera angle and that's what makes it a little bit easier to edit so it doesn't look all clustered on the timeline so after this I'm thinking maybe I uh, have it switched over to the front view so be like that yep So this is where the tremolo comes in. So I'm gonna put all three guitar parts on the screen to, to 80 and then make this to 80 as well. Just probably move this up just a wee bit as well. Yep, that looks good. And then And then when the tremolo kicks in, oh, my computer does not like that one bit. Sorry about that quick cut there. My camera has ran out of memory space. So uh, last time I was recording, I was editing. And when the camera stopped recording, I wanted to get the whole editing process out of the way since I already showed you guys a little bit of my process and how I go about editing and so yeah I hope this video helped you guys out in getting started on creating your cover video alright so I'm going to leave it there I hope you guys enjoyed this and if you did be sure to hit that thumbs up button and also subscribe if you're new I'll see you guys in the next video